Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're just going to be thinking about creation and evolution and why we should, as Christians, continue to believe that God created this world. Let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your love and your grace. And Lord, we give you the prayers and we give you the glory today. And Father, as we look at your word, uh, we pray that you bless us now. Encourage us, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. In the word of God in Isaiah 40, 22, it says, He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and his people are like grasshoppers. He stretched out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Isaiah 40, 22. All along the line, there is pressure to, to abandon the teaching that God created the world and to share the Bible to the world's thinking. Many scientists like Dawkins, who pronounce grandiose statements, there is no God because of his inter so-called intellectual brilliance, um, have intimidated many Christians to accept evolution. And many Christians have fallen into the trap of believing that Genesis 1 and 2 is not historically literal. So John MacArthur has stated many who should know better pastors and Christian leaders who defend the faith against false teaching regularly have been tempted to give up the battle for the opening chapters of Genesis. An evangelical pastor recently approached me after I preached and he was confused and intimidated by several books he had read, all written by ostensibly evangelical authors, yet all arguing that the earth is billions of years old. These authors treat most of the evolutionary theories as indisputable scientific fact. Yet the word of God clearly states in Mark chapter 13, 9, when God created the world. We must remember that evolution is not a fact, even though the scientists might say so. It does not have the fundamental facts to prove its point. Uh, just an aside, for example, mutations. We've never found the mutations to take place that it can provide the variety of animals that we see today. It's never been demonstrated. So it is not a fact, even though scientists might say so. They are just deluded, and that, or they're not being honest, or whatever. But it is not a fact, even though they might say it is. It is true to say that animals can adapt to the environment and change a little bit. But it is not true to say that animals can change from one animal into another animal. That has never been demonstrated scientifically. We don't see sheep developing into lions or lions developing into something else. So the first question is, does this all really matter? I remember one guy lecturing on six day creation and a lady went up to him and said, does this really all does this really matter? You might be tempted, well, you know, what does this matter? Is this subject that important? And the answer to that is yes. In Psalm 19.1 it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. When people say that God did not create the world, or Christians follow the modern trend of the time and believe in evolution, Basically, they're taking away the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. When Christians are saying that the world evolved, the, con the countryside that we live in, the birds that we see, the animals, the beauty of nature, all that we see around us, instead of subscribing and giving God the glory, we are taken away. His glory. It's kind of like a master painter, a Leonardo da Vinci painter, uh, picture, 
and we look at a Leonardo da Vinci picture and yet we don't give Leonardo da Vinci the glory. Uh, one theologian uh, in the third century says, what could you possibly say then that would be worthy of him? He is more sublime than all sublimity, higher than the heights, deeper than all depth, cl cleaner than all light, brighter than all brilliance, more splendid than all splendor. We have a great God who created this world and he deserves to be given the glory. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. There is starry host by, by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea jars and he puts the deep into the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all, let all the people of the world revere him. Psalm 33, 6 and 8. We need to honor God, give him the glory for the creation that he has done. Secondly, what evidence do you have? If you're saying that evolution is not true, what evidence do you have for creation? Jason, you're only a preacher, you're not a scientist, so how do you know that there is evidence for creation and not evolution? During the French Revolution, the, there was a thinker, a French thinker, French free thinker, that wanted to destroy uh, the churches and he said I'm going to pull down your chapels so you cannot speak about your God um, the peasant said you can pull down our chapels but you can't pull down the heavens they speak the heavens speak of God that is the evidence Psalm 19 verse 2 and 4 day after day they pour forth speech night after night they display knowledge there is no speech or language where their voice is not heard their voice goes out into all the earth the words works to the end of the earth Psalm 19 2 and 4 if people would only look at creation itself they could see that there is a creator creation speaks of purpose of meaning it speaks of order all these things display that there is a creator Romans 120 says for since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse in the DNA there is more information than uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica. We have created uh, the shuttle and a command station in space, created by humans, very complex, but the human brain is far more complex. It's more complex than any of NASA's space program put together. How did that complexity come about? How could it have come about by accident? Crabs show a surprising uh, in intelligence of a designer. The her hermit crab has a, a natural shell that it gets rid of. Then it uses another shell of a sea creature. One leg is used to hold the shell the other leg used as a door on top of these shells are a creation are a um, creature that goes to li live a spongy stingy thing so if a fish attacks it it gets stung and then the stingy sea amenies jump off eats the crab eat, eat, sorry eats the crabs leftovers and then jumps back um, back on it so all these intricate um, things about the crab and the way uh, the shells made the way it gets rid of its shell the way it adapts itself the way other creatures are using the crab can't have been by accident sea cucumbers are slimy stuff when they are attacked by a fish 
they let some of its internal organs go and the fish thinks it's killed it but the sea cucumber has fooled the fish how can these things how can these things work them out unless it's by a creator John MacArthur could all this be the product of evolutionary chance certainly not it's more proof than all the wise creature all wise more proof that an all wise creator designed each of these creatures John MacArthur you say well Jay I, I would be inclined to believe you but I need some knockdown evidence okay the Sun is an immense ball of flame it is 865,000 miles in diameter 109 times the dia diameter of the earth if the Sun were hollow it would take more than a million earth size objects to fill it the Sun as is a bowling ball and each would be the earth would be a poppy seed at its core the Sun is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit the distance from the earth is 93 million miles it takes eight and a half minutes for light to travel to the earth the brightness is for fairly constant but sometimes dark spots erupt they can bring changes to the earth one single eruption typical is equal to several million megaton hydrogen bombs the energy from the explosion can reach earth in well over a long period of time the power of an sorry so that's some facts about the uh, about the Sun Psalm 1946 the heavens he has pitched a tent for the Sun which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion like a champion rejoicing to run his course it rises at one end of the heavens and makes it current to the other nothing is hidden from its heat now here's the point here's the not down argument yet with all this power we are not destroyed yet the Sun maintains an amazing balance of light and energy that is perfect to sustain life on earth the brightness or the or the um, or the temperature of the Sun were to increase or decrease by only a few percentage points either way life would soon end on earth John MacArthur all this blessing given to us by the light cannot be by chance if you build a stack of cards into a pyramid and you knock the bottom cards the whole pyramid falls and scientists say dogmatically we evolved it is a massive attack upon the foundations of the Christian faith if your Christianity believes that Genesis 1 and 2 was not historical then your faith has collapsed you might try to hold on to faith but at the end of the day if you believe that Jesus uh, that in, in, in that we evolved then Jesus died for an allegory because Adam and Eve were not real and sin didn't really come into this world if Genesis 2 is seen just as a story it destroys again I gotta say this the foundation of the faith Adam and Eve were real historical people and sin really came into the world and Jesus really died for sin if for one moment we don't believe those historical facts the whole faith falls to the ground it says in Colossians 1 16 for by him all things were created things in heaven and earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things were created by him and for him we believe in God as a creator we must never ever give this up Jesus is God and he created this world and he came down in human flesh and died so that we might be redeemed from sin and its power 
And Christ is above. And he is Lord of all. And he is the creator. And we have to trust in him. Don't be intimidated by the scientist and theologians that will tell you that God did not create this world. That it was all done by evolution. If you were to sit down just for one minute and look at the world around you, you would see within seconds how absurd such a statement is. And so you mustn't be intimidated by the big credentials and the big scientists and the big theologians. You mustn't be intimidated. You must hold on to mm -hmm. the truth. And you'll be able to find scientists who will give you the answers to these evolutionists. Just look around, there are quite a few. But don't be intimidated. Stick to the Bible and what the Bible teaches. God bless you.